hello and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY video. I'm joined today by Robin Coots. She is an advanced design engineer at Dyson. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Now we've just had a great session with you and some of your colleagues talking about the James Dyson Awards. But before we get to that, which is a great awards uh, program, um, you know, you're an engineer at Dyson. We're always talking about the world needs more female engineers. So what has it been like working at one of the world's most inspirational companies and what was the process of applying to get a job at Dyson? Definitely, so I've been at Dyson for four years now. I studied product design technology, so that's kind of a mixed technology and design course mm -hmm. where I did kind of the fundamentals engineering but also mixed with design. So I then went and did kind of a year and a half at a more an engineering focus, so road and, road and rail infrastructure. I then decided I wanted to move more into consumer products. So I applied for Dyson um, and because Dyson is so big, we're looking for so many engineers. Um, I managed to get a job in the new category. So at the time we didn't have hair care, mm -hmm. so it was so secretive. I didn't even know what my job was going to be <laughs> yep. until the first day I arrived, literally met my boss the first day. I was like, hello, never met you before um, and just got thrown into the deep end and then yeah, Four years later, we've obviously now developed the hair care category. We now have two products on the market, which is absolutely amazing. Um, it's really great for me because we're actually developing tech for women, which tech, like historically, companies don't necessarily do. Mm. We see tech mainly, mainly as a male orientated thing. Um, yeah, it's really exciting for me, and it's, it's, it's really inspirational to be able to work for a company who's innovating in areas for women um, and just areas that people don't necessarily look at. So, yeah. And are you seeing more and more women around the world becoming engineers and at Dyson as well? Oh, massively, definitely. I mean, if we look at the Dyson Institute of Technology, for example, you know, the first cohort, I believe, was about 27% women, mm -hmm. and now we're at 40% women. We're about to take the third year of cohort. And it's just super exciting to see more women get involved, getting more engaged. You know, we are 50% of the population, as many people like to say, and we need those experiences when we're developing these products. You know, engineering is going to be pivotal to our sort of the next kind of decades moving forward, mm. making more efficient, more sustainable, um, more solutions to problems that the world is facing and we really need women to be part of those conversations. Well, I mean, you're part of making science fiction become science fact every day. I suppose so, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> we use the Coanda effect to uh, magically make curls, so yeah. So just briefly uh, show us some of the things you've been working on. You've got some, uh, some cutaway devices, you have to, you'll have to lift it up. Yep, definitely. So yeah, so at Dyson we started with the Dyson Supersonic, and mm -hmm. um, the main pivotal thing about this is that we managed to use our um, motor technology, so if you actually think about all the products that Dyson has ever developed, mm -hmm. pretty much all of them have a motor within them. So we managed to use that really expertise to be able to make the V9 digital motor. Yep. So this is the impeller that sits within that motor. It's about 27 millimeters, not about, it yep. is 27 millimeters in diameter, which is extremely small um, considering the power that it delivers. So it's spinning at about 110,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. um, it's high speed, um, high pressure motor. And that enabled us to move the motor from the typically conventionally in the head of a mm -hmm. hairdryer into the handle, makes it more ergonomic, in, and also enabled us to be able to use our air multiplication um, technology to be able to, again, to uh, ramp up the, uh, the, the, the power of the hairdryer. Um, and we're also using something it's really great. We're measuring the temperature, making sure that we don't go into extreme temperatures, um, which actually burn and damage the hair. Mm -hmm. We then were able to use the same similar technology. So again, we've got our V9 digital motor sat in here. Um, and again, our heater technology to make the Dyson Air Wrap. The Dyson Air Wrap actually has attachments to it. Um, and we utilize something called the Coanda effect, which is a fundamental uh, scientific um, Principle. Uh, principle, yeah. yeah. Um, and we um, be able to put it six times around a barrel and actually be able to curl, dry your hair at the same time without using, again, extreme temperatures that kind of conventional hair straighteners and curlers use. So, yeah, two really interesting, great pieces of technology that are helping us to create beautiful, shiny hair for um, women across the globe. And men, and men. I, I was lucky to go to the, the launch of this product in Amazing. Australia and see the videos. And, I mean, it's, it's always incredible when companies design products where nobody Nobody thinks you need any more advancement and then somebody comes out with something that's completely unexpected and it changes uh, you know changes the way that women can look after their hair and in the past it was all about getting your hair burnt or damaged and you showed some YouTube videos there's a there's a great video of the entire presentation you gave to all the students where you can see that in action and um, I mean I guess this is something that you're using every day it's changed your life too 
Definitely, massively. And I, um, again, yeah, as, as you say, it's, it's super exciting. Like, if you think about hair dryers, they hadn't fundamentally changed since their conception. Mm. You know, nothing had changed about them. And at Dyson, we are there to solve problems that others ignore. That is our fundamental um, theory. That's what we live and breathe. You know, um, James is really keen for us to not bring products to the market for the sake of bringing products. So a lot of companies will reiterate the same thing over and over again. You know, the Dyson Supersonic has been out for um, over three years now. And, and fundamentally, we know it's a good product. We're not just reiterating. We're not just re-spinning the wheel. Yeah. You know, we want to bring out new innovative um, products. And, and that is just super exciting and super amazing to work for a company like that. Um, um, so yeah. Well, I see it with the vacuum cleaners too. Every generation has real changes. It's not just a little evolution. It's a revolution each time, or at least I like to think so, especially <laughs> with a new V11. So look, we're here to also to talk about the James Dyson Award. Now, you're based in Chicago mm -hmm. in the States, and uh, tell us about your journey to Australia to talk about the, the awards. Definitely. So one of the things that we're doing at the moment is doing like a university roadshow mm -hmm. and that's going around to universities and really making sure that the students understand what they need to be able to enter. So I think people get really hung up that they need these amazing ideas and like have, have a fully working prototype that's beautifully made out of, you know, injection molded mm -hmm. and, and that's 3D printed or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And that is just not the case. That's not what we're after. We're after innovative ideas that show some potential, that show that could be iterated and could could be potentially something that would solve a problem you know essentially the brief is to solve a problem James wants it really open he wants to she wants to allow people from any different aspect to be able to enter and I think sometimes we get too bogged down on the constraints and briefs whereas we just want to see interesting innovative ideas from students across the globe and Australia you know we have the um, national awards so that would just be Australia just judged by Australian judges mm -hmm. and then I think the top three go into the international awards um, which is obviously amazing and mm. winning that is such a coveted sort of award. And how many countries are the awards in at the moment? I believe it's 27. Okay. So it's, it's some um, fierce, fierce competition, but there is a prize for the person that wins nationally. Mm -hmm. I believe it's eight and a half thousand dollars. Because it's all it's all in pounds normally. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. All, yes, so sorry. I that's okay, that's okay. So let's just quickly look at what the next slide is. Yeah, so sure. I can't remember if that's the criteria. So actually, this yeah. was this was an ex example. This was an example. Yes. Yeah, so so th in this example here. There's only, it was only a couple of slides. I mean, there was no, so just tell us briefly yeah, about this. Yeah, I believe, so this is uh, Lachlan um, and Hugh McKay. So they were attending Swinburne University. Mm -hmm. This was actually part of their module. So they did the, all of this work as part before of Before they even knew the awards existed. Yes, before they yeah. knew the, the awards existed. So it just shows if you have something that you're already working on, um, or even just at university, even if you did it last year, for example, mm. as part of your coursework, you could be something that you could have already that pre-exists that you could enter with. So yeah, they ended with these two slides. On the left here, we have the kind of, I, think, I believe it was the first or second week presentation. And then the right hand side was further on in the process. So kind of at the end of their module. So maybe I think potentially like six or eight weeks in. Um, and it just shows the kind of the, the, the really simplicity that you need to be able to enter. You know, this is literally just a drawing mm. that they've put some dimensions on. Yeah. Um, and the, he said to us, the reason why he chose some, so early on this slide was because it actually showed the most, um, communicated the idea the most. Mm. Um, and yeah, and I think it just, it just shows this was, this is a wheelbarrow that was used for flood affected areas in third world countries. Mm -hmm. So they could use it as a stool or something else while it wasn't, while they didn't need it for the floods. And then they could do a clear up because that was one of the biggest issues was actually clearing up after a flood. And then during a flood, using it as an actual um, floating device. And I just think that's such a great multi-use device. Um, another Very thing, clever. Yeah, I mean, another thing that you might think is like, oh, how did he ever know to do that if he's from Australia? But mm. he actually had someone brief him on it. They had a whole sort of pack, information pack. Um, and again, it's important to look for ideas that are outside of your immediate. So look at the problems that affect a wider population and um, that are going to be really potentially commercially viable um, and be really beneficial to, to many. And Australia is certainly known for its droughts and flooding rains. And uh, we, we have floods and we had them in Brisbane, we've had them in Townsville. Uh, it happens quite often in Australia, so there's no reason why this product couldn't be used here either. So this uh, was a finalist or didn't quite make it to the finalist stage? So this, I believe, got into the top three of the national competitions in, in Australia, Australia. Yep. Um, and but then got selected to go into the international awards. Okay, yep. And I believe he did pretty well in the international. But yeah, so he got international recognition. Um, they went on TV in yeah. Australia. They talked to many journalists. So it was great experience for them. 
um, and also really good, um, what's the word, cover, exposure, exposure, yeah. exposure for them. And have they turned it into a commercial product or not as yet? Um, they haven't as of yet. I believe that um, Lachlan is still kind of uh, keeping it under, under wraps. wraps yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and you know, another great example was the that we saw in the presentation was the bump mark. So um, she's actually now taking that and trying to make that into a business. Sure, that, people see that on the video, but that was a little uh, dot that shows where the food is spoiled and that was perfect for people who are vision impaired or you know can't see it, that something's gone off. Or even or just for them. us, yeah. because we don't necessarily, people who, or not us, sorry, people yeah. who don't have a visual impairment because we don't, we tend to throw out food that potentially might be fine. Sure. So it's a great little um, invention and she's actually taking that forward. So that's a great example of, uh, of what you can do. And, and, a, and a lot of them is not necessarily taking forward your particular idea, but it might open up to a networking opportunity. It might open up to a job opportunity or working or funding. You know, you just don't know where these kind of things are going to lead. One day Lachlan will open up the floodgates of uh, PR and profitability. In the... exactly. <laughs> so yes. now Lachlan is now also a judge for the yes. Arsenal. Yeah. In Australia? Yeah, he will be part of the, um, I think, I believe there's three judges um, in the Australia um, team, and he'll be looking at those. And, and what's great is that he's actually experienced it, so he already knows what it takes and what, what is needed to be able to go through this process. Um, and that's, that's really reflective of who we choose as judges to be yeah. able to do this sort of thing. So can we just go to the next slide? So I think he would just, just briefly just tell us about one or two of these yeah. that really um, caught your eye. And people can look, look at, go to the James Dyson Award.org website to learn more about all of these. Definitely, there's loads of information on the James Dyson Award uh, page. But So the wind turbine was actually a 2018 winner, mm -hmm. international winner. Yep. Um, it's a great, it's a turbine that utilizes all axes of uh, power. So, you know, conventionally you have like a one axis spinning. Sure. So you're only catching the wind in one, one plane. Whereas here you can see um, there's lots of vents in different areas and it's going to spin that turbine regardless of the wind direction. Sure. We also, I think what's really cool about this is they won, but they still have masking tape on their, <laughs> <laughs> on their product. And it just shows the, you know, the refinement that you need to be able to actually enter, but actually win. So, you know, you, we're not looking for fully functioning finished products. Sure. Um, another one that I actually really love just because of the simplicity is folks kitchenware. So again, this is visual impairment, but you can see how simple this product actually is, but how beneficial that is going to be to a wide range of people. Sure. Well, look, we're, we're just really running out of time. We have to, we've got another class coming into this area. So the website is jamesdysonaward.org, yeah. and people can find all the criteria. Yeah. And as you can see, even if it's something that's got masking tape on it, if it's a great idea, you want to know all about it. Exactly. Thank, well, thank you. you very much, Robin. Thank, thank you. you.